are able and willing, if you join me in standing in honor of the reading of God's word, we'll read verse 1 down through verse 14. Verse 11 will be our text verse, and uh, we'll uh, preach on, uh, I said, Brother Ferrer, respecting uh, the maker. I'll explain that later. Explaining, uh, respecting the maker. The burden of the valley of, of vision. What aileth thee now that thou art wholly gone up to the housetops? Thou art full of stirs, a tumultuous city, a joyous city. They, they slain men, I'm sorry, thy slain, thy slain men are not slain with the sword, nor dead in battle. All thy rulers are fled together, they are bound by the archers. All that are found in thee are bound together, which have fled from afar, or fled from far. Therefore, said I, look away from me. I will weep bitterly, labor not to comfort me because of the spoiling of the daughter of my people. For it is a day of trouble and a treading down and of treading down and of perplexity by the Lord God of hosts in the valley of vision, breaking down the walls and of crying to the mountains. And Elam bare the quiver with chariots of men and horsemen of, and, uh, and Kerr uncovered the shield. And it shall come to pass that thy choicest valleys shall be full of chariots and the horsemen shall set themselves in array at the gate. And he discovered the covering of Judah, and thou didst look in that day to the armor of the house of the forest. Ye have seen all the breaches of the city of David, that they are many, and ye gathered together the waters of the lower pool. And ye have numbered the houses of Jerusalem, and the houses have ye broken down to fortify the wall. Ye made also a ditch, between the two walls for the water of the old pool. But ye have not looked unto the maker thereof, neither had respect unto him that fashioned it long ago. In that day did the Lord God of hosts call to weeping and to mourning and to baldness and to girding with sackcloth. And behold, joy and gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating flesh and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die." And it was revealed in mine ears by the Lord of hosts, Surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die, saith the Lord God of hosts. Again, I'm going to preach a message. I'll try to uh, be brief this evening. Uh, I know there's a lot going on, and, and some are traveling this evening. Um, i try to preach a message with this title tonight, Respecting the Maker. Respecting the Maker. Father in heaven, help us, Lord, I, I pray. This is really a great truth here, and I, and I feel unworthy, un, uh, uh, unqualified, other than what, your, uh, what qualification, uh, uh, what worth you've given me. I, I, don't, I, I, I don't feel that I, I especially, uh, definitely in my flesh, but uh, Lord, I, I just don't feel uh, uh, qualified to preach a message that there's, uh, there's a, such a great truth here, and, and I pray that you'd use me this evening to preach a, a great truth, uh, to simplify it, Lord, but also to help us understand how important it is to, to, to seek your word and to know what you want and you desire and, and uh, not be turned astray by false teaching and false doctrine. Help us, Lord, I pray. Uh, this is uh, something we need, not just our church, but our, our, our society, our, our, our city, our state, our nation needs this great truth tonight. Help us, Lord, I pray. Uh, to convey exactly what you want me to convey, the, uh, the, uh, the truths accurately with the power of the Spirit of God, I pray. I, I beg and plead for that you'd fill me with your Spirit, fill each hearer with your Spirit. In Jesus Christ's name I pray it. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. As we go through the book of Isaiah, and uh, we'll, we'll preach on Wednesday night on Isaiah himself as a man, uh, but as we go through the book of Isaiah, you see that there's a number of times beginning in verse number 13, that he's bringing the burden, the Lord's burden, to a specific place. If we go to chapter 13, it's the first time you see the, the burden of a specific place. The first place is Babylon in verse number 13. And God gives a prophecy and woes, he brings a burden to Babylon through Isaiah. Isaiah is the prophet, and uh, he brings Babylon some... Uh, um, uh, uh, prophecy or some revelation and not prophecy revelation in the way that we think of it uh, although it could be that way but more uh, hey this is what's going to happen if you don't get right 
That's what's happening. A burden that's taken to them. Remember when we talked about Malachi and, and we said that he's bearing this burden to the people of God. That's what's happening with Isaiah. I have a burden uh, first in chapter 13 to Babylon and then chapter 15 to Moab in chapter 17 to Damascus, Syria. In chapter 21, Arabia, uh, there's several different uh, um, uh, words that are used, but in, you go through and, and look at chapter 21, it's Arabia that it's being referred to. In chapter 23, just across the page, it's the, the burden of Tyre. But in chapter 22, you have all these places that surround Israel, uh, uh, Babylon to the uh, um, far east, and, and Moab that's just south of them, and Damascus that's north of them, uh, Arabia to the near east of them, Tyre to the north and a little bit west of, uh, of them. But then in chapter 22, he says, a burden of the valley of vision. Um, as I study this chapter, I believe that this is referring to, as you look through this chapter, he's referring to Jerusalem, the valley of vision. Now, we understand that Jerusalem is a hill. You say, how could that be a valley? There's a, a hill or a mountain that goes up for Jerusalem, and then there's valley all around it, and then it's surrounded by mountains around that. And so when you look, look at this passage, uh, as you go through this passage here, uh, uh, what we all, what, uh, all that we read, we can look at uh, verse number 8, and he discovered the covering of Judah. Verse number 9, you have seen also the breaches of the city of David. In verse number 10, you have numbered the houses of Jerusalem. He is talking about what has taken place in Jerusalem. And, and, and so this, this burden is to the city of Jerusalem. If we look at this, in chapter 3, they were captured. All thy rulers are fled together. They are bound by the archers. That means that they weren't killed. And we look at chapter, uh, verse number 2. They weren't killed. They were captured. They were bound. Uh, it says that their walls were torn down. In verse number 5. For it is a day of trouble and a treading down and perplexity by the Lord God of hosts in the valley of vision, breaking down the walls. And, and, uh, and of crying to the mountains. The, the walls have been torn down. They've been captured. The walls have torn down. The enemies have opened them up. Uh, an amazing uh, uh, wording here in verses 6 through 8. And Elam. Now remember a few weeks ago when we talked about all the different uh, um, uh, places in Acts chapter, what was it, Acts chapter 2 or 3, uh, when the, the, the Spirit of God came down on them on the day of Pentecost and a cloven, a cloven tongue, and they were in the upper room, and they began to speak with known tongues uh, um, to, to the different groups of Jews that had gathered them. And one of the groups was the Elamites. How many remember that? Hopefully at least a couple of us remember that, right? And if you remember, we used a map, and the Elamites were way on the other side of uh, the Persian Gulf. They were what we would consider the area of Babylon now. But the Elam, and so uh, Elam is an, another area that we would uh, refer to as Babylon. He says, and Elam, B Babylon, bear the quiver with chariots. Hey, the archers are the ones that bound them, it says in verse number three, and the ones that held the quiver of the bow, of the arrow, were the Elamites, those from Babylon, from that part of the country. Uh, 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 bear the, the, and Elam bear the quiver and the chariots of men and horsemen and Kerr, Kerr is the city of Assyria again another name for that part of the country the enemies that have come to Jerusalem and so we see they were captured, not killed the walls were torn down the enemies opened them up look at verse number 8 and he discovered the covering of Judah um, in the law we won't go into great detail here but there's, uh, uh, when we go back to the books of Deuteronomy, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Leviticus, Exodus, Leviticus, we see that it's a, a curse to, un, to discover the nakedness of thy father or thy mother. I may remember reading that in your Bible, to discover, they use that phrase, discover the nakedness. It literally means to uncover something, all right? So that's what this is talking about. He, and they, he discovered, he uncovered the covering of Judah and thou didst look in that day to the armor of the house of the forest. What it's saying is it's taken bare their, their protection. You don't want your enemy to see what kind of reserves you have. You don't want your enemy to see what kind of protection you have. And what it's saying is the enemy for Jerusalem has discovered, has opened up, has seen what they have for protection. That's what this is referring to. 
Then it says in verse number 10, they broke down the houses to build up the wall. And, and that could be a message in itself. That the, the protection for a family has taken apart to build up for the community. Then it says in verse number 11, Ye made also a ditch between the two walls for the water of the old pool. So there are two walls in Jerusalem. You had an inner wall and an outer wall. And what they did is they dug between the two walls to have a ditch to serve water from one place. And doesn't say really where it's coming from, but to serve water from one place to another. It says, uh, um, ye, have not, uh, uh, um, ye have made also a ditch between the two walls for the water of the old pool, but, and, and it says, well, we're trying to fill this old pool. That sounds like it would be a good thing to do. But, it says, ye have not looked unto the maker thereof. You haven't gone back and considered why and how they built the wall. Now notice what it says. Ye have not looked unto the maker thereof. Every wall is going to have a, an architect. Every wall is going to have some kind of plan. And they may not have gone, been able to go back to the, the actual builder, the person who actually built it. But the design of that wall, they could have gone back and said, hey, why was it designed this way? Is, was the, uh, 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 this wall was intended for a certain reason. Will this work? Certainly, <coughs> we would, uh, there's no argument that what they were trying to do was probably a good thing to fill up the old pool, but they had a problem. They did not look unto the maker thereof, neither had respect unto him that fashioned it long ago. They didn't respect the maker. They didn't go back and say, hey, what did the maker intend? And so we're going to make sure we think about that. No, it's just we'll tear away the old and put in new, something that, that suits us, that fits us, and without any consideration of why it was built or how is it, it was built or what the design originally was for. Can I tell you that though we're not talking about filling old pools, we have a lot of that going on in our world today. We have a lot of that going on in churches today. Let's get rid of the old. We don't want, it doesn't matter without any, and, and we'll do something new because this works for us without any consideration for the way things were designed or the way or who put them there or why that they're, they're there that they are put that way. This is a great truth I told Brother Ferreira, uh, Brother Djack. I. I'm afraid I'm not going to do it justice, but there's a great truth here that I, I'd like to preach on and uh, just pr principles to consider in regard uh, to respecting the maker. Uh, much of the problems that we have today are a result of people tearing away the foundation of things without any consideration for what reason something was done. And so I just want to give you a couple things to consider. Number one, let me say this, realize that every teaching has an origin. Every teaching has an origin. Let's do a little bit of a Bible study tonight. Take your Bibles and go over to 1 Corinthians. And I preached on this passage this morning, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, not these specific verses. We'll use our Bibles quite a bit tonight, but uh, um, we talked about the grace of God in verses 9 and 10. But I want you to, to see something here. Verse Corinthians chapter 15. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. Now, think about this. The Apostle Paul is not saying, hey guys, I've got something new to give you. I've got something brand new that, that didn't originate anywhere else. He said, what I received, which, which I'm, what I'm giving to you to receive, I received somewhere else. How many times we started preaching through the book of Acts, 
the, the, every message that we've talked about that has been preached in the book of Acts, Peter has preached, we've covered two different messages from the apostle Peter. And what does he stand and do? He quotes scripture. He says, the law and the prophets say this. He goes back to the word of God. And can I tell you that every truth has an origin. Every truth has an origin. We would do well when we hear something to say, where did that come from? The Apostle Paul says, I have something. It came from the law. It came from the, the uh, prophets. It came from the disciples, the apostles. Uh, that, that's where uh, I have this truth. The, 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 this, uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What's it say in verse, I think it's five. Uh, it says death, uh, how, uh, how Jesus died for our sins. What's it say according to the scriptures? And that he was buried and that he rose the third day. What's it say after that? According to the scriptures. We have to be careful that any principle, any truth that we hear Whatever we hear, we have to go back and see, say, where did that come from? Even if it sounds good, I'm sure these guys in Jerusalem said, you know what? We need to fill up the old pool. Now, I don't know where they were running the water from. It doesn't say, but it says that they, needed to, they were going to fill the old pool. And they said, well, guys, let's, let's dig a ditch between the two walls. And they didn't consider at all... The, the plans of the original maker. They didn't consider at all the intent of the original maker. We've got to be careful that when we hear a truth, when we hear a teaching, not a truth, a teaching, because there's a lot of things, there's a lot of things that people call truth that are not truth. We've got to be very careful that when we hear a teaching, we say, where did that come from? We are inundated in uh, the social media world that we're in right now. We were talking to Miss Priya, and I, I haven't recognized her at all since she's been here. It's good to have Miss Priya straight from Kenya. It's good to have her here. Uh, she was talking about how that uh, the, the LBGT uh, agenda is being pushed at schools in Kenya. You say, well, wait a minute. I thought that that was against the, the law in Kenya. Well, it was, and then it got reversed very quietly. And I said, well, wait a minute, where, if, this, if this same agenda that's getting pushed in our schools here, that anti-Bible, against the word of God, if those things are getting pushed there in, in Kenya, who's pushing them? Well, the teachers, not really. The government, not really. You know what our answer was? Social media. Social media. It's amazing how these... I have mine's in my, my office. These little things in our hand influence. In fact, some people that are on social media all the time that put out things, that's what they're called, influencers. Influencers. We have to be careful when we hear something or we see something. We've got to teach our children that when we hear something, we see something, we have to ask ourselves the question, where did that come from? The Apostle Paul says, I've got the gospel, but I didn't get it myself. The, the gospel that I'm giving to you, I received from the scriptures, from the word of God. We make sure we have to ask that question, realize that every teaching has an origin. Take your Bibles and go over to 1 Timothy chapter 4. There's teaching that is from God, from the scriptures. By the way, this is one of the reasons we preach and, and, and preach and and. and Harp on the, the idea of reading your Bible, knowing your, your, your Bible, because we will be blown about with every wind of doctrine if we don't know what the Word of God says. We have a biblically illiterate society. Uh, uh, you've heard me say it before. I, I forget the old preacher that said it. They, uh, a, a, a preacher older than me asked an older preacher, said, uh, what's the difference between churches now and churches back in the 50s? And he said, well, the preachers of today, the preachers, the ones in the pulpit today, know their Bible less than the people in the pew. The preachers of today know their Bible less 
than the people in the pew in the 50s. The people in the pew knew their Bibles far more than the preachers in the pulpit today. That's a sad commentary on not just our pulpits, but on the spiritual condition of churches in our country. We don't know our Bible. Now look what it says, 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, I, 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 I believe we're in the latter times. I, I believe we're in those times. I, the, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Are you trying to tell me that there's teaching, that there's doctrines that don't come from God? Absolutely. There's doctrines of devils. And, and, and there's seducing spirits. Look, it, 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 you say, well, it's, that's uh, easy to tell. The word seducing says otherwise. It's not always easy to tell. How do you know? You get in the book. What I'm saying is, number one, i got to hurry, realize that every teaching has an origin. Say, well, you know what, my, 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 my cousin said it's okay if we do this. Well, t- ask your cousin where that came from. You know, I saw on a TV preacher that he said uh, that, that this is okay. Well, did he quote a scripture? I'm talking about morality. I'm talking about how, how church should be done. All kinds of things. Everything that we believe should come from the book. My, uh, we might even stop at this point. I don't know. My generation, there's a whole lot of preachers in my generation. Between the age of 30 and 50, and I fall right in between there. I'm 42. There are a whole lot of preachers right now my generation that are saying, why do we do this? It's not getting water to the old well. It's not, it's not working well. Let's just change it. Now look, I'm not going to stand up and say that we have to constantly follow the traditions of man. But some of the things that we do, we need to make sure that if we do them differently, we need to make sure that we're not going against the creator, going against the maker. Some of the things we do, we do for a reason, and it's in the word of God. And if we don't continue to teach the word of God, I'm not talking about traditions of man. Look, uh, Jesus came and and he uh, uh, condemned the traditions of man with, with the religious Pharisees. I'm not talking about just sticking with tradition, but let me tell you, If we're going to change something, we better make sure that what we're doing is coming from the Word of God and it's not a doctrine of devils. We better make sure that what what we're doing is from God's Word and not just at a whim because, well, we want some water over here. We have to make sure that we are making our decisions based on the Word of God. Realize that every teaching has an origin. Let me get through the other three points very quickly. Number two, let me say this, recognize that our lack of understanding doesn't mean it's wrong. Recognize that a a, a lack of understanding of of something doesn't mean it's wrong. Go back to the book of Job, and and we don't have to, I've got three chapters to go through in the book of Job, and we won't be able to do that, so maybe I'll stop here. (laughs) Job chapter 38. Now, I preached on this passage uh, in in chapel a few days ago in our school. Job and his friends, the the miserable comforters that they were, uh, it's funny because Job's friends come to him and say, we come to comfort you. And at the end of it, he says, miserable comforters are you. (laughs) You didn't really do your job, did you? (laughs) But they go back and forth, Job's friends and him, and Job seems to uh, want to justify himself. And then in chapter 38, the Lord shows up. And he says this, Then the Lord answered Job out of a whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? 
Let me tell you, that is what is happening all over our country today. That is darkening counsel by words without knowledge, without the book. Counsel from God's word should enlighten. Counsel from God's word should, should turn the light on. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. The word of God brings light to, to the situation. It brings understanding. But when we are using words without knowledge, we're darkening the counsel. We're darkening. We're, we're tripping all over the place because we can't see what we're doing spiritually. And notice what it says. God says, who is this that's darkening, uh, uh, that darkeneth the counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. Huh. Then I, I think in chapter 38, there's 37 questions. In chapter uh, 39, there's 19 questions. I think it's uh, 56 times in those two chapters he asks a rhetorical question. Questions like this. Where was thou when I laid the foundation of the earth? <laughs> God says, where were you when I created the earth? Where were you when I laid the... Were you around? Uh, it's a rhetorical question. We all know the answer. He says, declare if thou, underst if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof if thou knowest? Who measured the earth? Anybody? Did, did you, were you around when that happened? Do you know? He said, or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are, uh, are the foundations thereof fastened? And we can go through this entire chapter, and it's question after question after question, where God basically dresses down Job and says, Who are you? You don't know what you're talking about. He says, look at the end of chapter 39. Doth the hawk fly by thy wisdom? We preached on that verse. Our, our school uh, mascot is the hawk. Doth the hawk fly by thy wisdom? Did you teach the hawk where to go? Uh, did you teach the hawk to fly south for the winter and stretch her wings toward the south? Doth the eagle mount up at thy command? <laughs> you know, I, I've been dressed down by, 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 by men before, and <laughs> I can't imagine what it would be like to be dressed down by God. Hey, d does the eagle fly by your command? Whose command does he fly by? Mine, God's. And then he says this in chapter 40, verse number 1. It says, Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? You're going to try to teach me? He that reproveth God, let him answer it. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile, lowly, is what vile means. What shall I answer thee? I will lay my hand upon my mouth. No more talking. Once I have spoken, but I will not answer. Yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. I thought I'd, I said something one time. The second time, I'm not going to try it. What I'd like to say secondly, and we'll be done with this thought, is this. Recognize that our lack of understanding doesn't mean something is wrong. Sometimes we look at the Word of God and we say, I don't get that. I don't understand why we do that. I don't understand why God told us to do it that way. Can I be honest with you? There's a lot of things that if, in my human perspective, that if I were God, I would probably do it differently. But if I were God and I were divine, like He is, all-knowing, all-powerful, I'd probably do it the way He does it. And even if I didn't, it doesn't matter. He is far greater than us. Were, were you around when he laid down the foundations of the earth? Does the, uh, uh, do you know when the goat has his kids? Do, do, do you know when the, uh, when the kind calves, I think it's the kind, what verse it is? It, uh, um, uh, I forget. It's, in, it's the, the, basically when, when, when cattle give their, have their young, you know, we have all kinds of science, animal science. We, can't, we don't know when the, a, 
a, a cow can give, give birth to its calf? We don't know. We know a time frame within a couple days, but even our, our, own, our own babies, we have a due date. We don't know. Does God know? God knows. God absolutely knows. We want to question the God of heaven because we don't understand something. We need to be very careful that we don't go against God's word because we don't understand something. And here these guys are in Jerusalem between the two walls. Well, I, I don't know why they did it that way, but let's, let's go ahead and put, the, let's put a creek right here. Let's put a ditch right here. Let's go ahead and run the water right through here. And God said, you haven't even considered the maker. Let's make sure we pay respect to the maker. Before we make decisions, before we start to, to uh, mess our lives up, before, before we start to, to change things, let's make sure we go to the maker and say, God, what do you want? We, we hear something uh, uh, on the radio or on TV or on social media, and we say, oh, that sounds like it'd be good. Be careful they're not just uh, itching the ears. Right? Teachers having itching, heaping to themselves, teachers having itching ears. But let's, let's make sure that we go back and find out where it comes from. Hey, let's see, what the, let's see what the book says. Let's see what God says. Let's make sure that we're respecting the Creator. I have two other thoughts. I think what I'll do probably is save those for next Sunday and we'll finish this message. We'll do a two-part message. But uh, I, I, this is a great truth. And again, I don't know that I'm doing any justice. But we've got to be very careful that before we start doing anything, Look, I'm not trying to set up, I'm, this isn't a, a, a message where I'm trying to set up our church, we're changing any, I'm not, I'm not, that's not the point at all. As I was reading in this, most of the messages that, that, I, that I preach, it just comes from my daily devotions. I was reading that, and it was like a light shone on that verse and said, they didn't pay attention to what God wanted, or the, the, uh, the, the makers of that wall wanted and designed. Isn't that what, our society, isn't that what even Christians do today? Let's just change things. It works for us without giving any consideration, without giving any respect to the maker, the one who wrote this book. We need to make sure that we're in this book and we know what God wants us to do. Father in heaven, help us, Lord, I pray to be obedient to you. I'm not even sure exactly. I didn't finish the message to get to the invitation point of the message. I, I, I just, I, I don't know how to give an invitation other than help us, Lord, I pray to know the word of God, that we can be obedient to you, that we can uh, make sure that we're, we're obeying your book and doing what you desire of us, Lord, I pray. Help us to be witnesses, help us to, be, to hold true to the, to the principles, the doctrine of God's word, the sound doctrine of God's word, our church, individuals, families, Help us to reach our community. Lord, I'm burdened for the Wildwood area, the St. Louis County area, St. Louis City, this area. There's so many churches that many once stood on biblical principles and are not anymore. And there's many people as we knock doors and we say, well, I used to go to a church that, but this things happened and this, Lord, we need to be a light in our community. Too many people are saying, well, that used to work, but this does, that doesn't work anymore. Lord, help us, I pray, to stick to the word of God. Stick to the book. Help us to be faithful to you, we pray. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. With heads bowed and eyes closed.